For this first part of the video, you don't need a pencil, you don't need to take any notes at all. I just need your eyes and ears. I'll let you know when it's time to pick up a pencil and do some work on paper. So the other day, we reviewed two ways to write numbers. In standard form, which is with the digits, and in written form, which is how you would write and read the number in words. In 34,500, the three is in the 10,000s place, the four in the thousands place, and the five is in the hundreds place. In written form, the number looks like this. 34,500. In the written form you see here on the screen, I'm writing the number in periods. We know that starting from the right, each group of three numbers creates a period. The digits 500 zero, zero are in the hundreds period. The digits 3 and 4 are in the thousands period. If I were to continue on to the left, I would end up in the millions period and then the billions period. The way we typically read numbers is to read them in these periods and say the place value when we get to the commas that separate the periods. So that's how we normally read and write numbers. However, sometimes it can be helpful to read numbers differently. For example, I could read this number also as 345 hundredths, and I wouldn't be wrong. That would look like this. 345 hundredths. Now you might right now be kind of looking at the computer sideways and thinking, huh? But stick with me because this is going to click. When we learn to read numbers this way with an eye on place values, it can make estimating and mental math much more manageable. So let's take a look at why 34,500 is the same thing as 345 hundredths. Let's think about good old Mr. Benjamin Franklin on the $100 bill. If we were talking money and I wanted to produce $34,500, how many hundreds would I need? So you can see here that I highlighted the hundreds place, which is pointing into the digit five. When I want to know the total amount of hundreds to make $34,500, I want to look at more than just the hundreds place. Because let's say that I owed you $34,500 and I only gave you $500 bills. Yeah, you'd feel cheated, right? You'd be like, Miss Queso, hey, $500, $34,000 short. Where's the rest of my money? So if I wanted to find out the total number of hundreds, I would need to read this number to the hundreds place. You can see that I highlighted the hundreds place here, right? I'm pointing to the digit five. Five is in the hundreds place. If I want to find out how many total hundreds are in this number, I need to look beyond just the hundreds place. Because if you look at the thousands here, we know that a thousand is the same as 10 hundreds, right? Nine hundreds would be a nine in the hundreds place. And we have 100 more than nine, it carries over to the thousands. And the same thing is true with thousands to ten thousands, ten thousands to hundred thousands, and so on. So I would want to read all the numbers to the left up to the hundreds place and then say the place value. So let's take a look at what we tr traditionally do. Traditionally, we would read 34, and then we'd say the place value when we get to the comma, 34,500. But I could also read these three digits together and then say the place value, 345 hundredths. So if I wanted to produce $34,500 in $100 bills, I would need 345 $100 bills. Let's say that instead I was talking about $10 bills. I could do the same thing, but read the number up to the tens place. So I'd need to identify the tens place first, and then I could read the whole, this part up to the tens. It would be 3,450 tens. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. This number is 1,700. That's how we would traditionally read this number if we're reading it in periods. However, I could also look at this number like 17 hundredths. 17 times 100 is 1,700. 
If I look at this number as groups of hundreds, I would have 17 hundreds. So 17 hundreds is the same as 1,700. And think about it like a long time ago when you learned place value back in like second grade, you learned tens, hundreds, thousands. If I were to create this with those place value blocks that you used to work with back in second grade, maybe back in third grade as well, we would need 17 hundreds. Here's my hundreds, right? I would need 17 of these. When we get to 10 hundreds, that creates 1,000. So just these two rows are 1,000. And then I've got another 500, 1,500, 1,600, 1,700. You can see through the illustration here that 17 hundreds does in fact make 1,700. We're just reading it differently. Here's another one. 160. Let's read this one to the tens. How many tens are in the number 160? Well, I know that 160 is the same as 16 times 10 or 16 tens. It would be read like this, 16 tens. And I know that back in the day, we had these 10 blocks that looked like this, right? If I had nine of them, that would be nine tens or 90, right? But then as soon as I add the next 10 frame, I can't fit a two digit number in the tens place. So we carry it over. So the one goes into the hundreds place. Or as you can see here, you can also look at it as 10 tens. In 160, we have 16 tens. So I would have six more than 10, 16 tens. Let's practice reading a few more numbers to different place values. This number here is 3,000. That's how we would traditionally read it, 3,000. But we could also read the number to the hundreds place. In that case, I'd want to identify the hundreds place and take a look at every place value to the left of that as well. If I read this to the hundreds place, it's 30 hundreds, 30 hundreds. And let's take a look at the same number, 3,000, but this time read it to the tens place. That goes up to my tens place. I have 300 tens, 300 tens. And again, if that feels tricky, sometimes it can help to try to visualize math. So think about good old Benjamin Franklin on the $100 bill and Alexander Hamilton on the $10 bill. If I were to want to create $3,000 with $100 bills, I would need 30 $100 bills or 300 $10 bills. Okay, let's review how reading numbers to different place values can be helpful when solving addition and subtraction problems. The easiest way to solve this problem mentally is to first identify the greatest place value in the lesser number. 600,000 is less than 2,700,000. And the greatest place value in this number is the 100,000s place. And there's a six in the 100,000s place. I want to then identify the same place value in the other number. There's a seven in the 100,000s place in the other number. Now I'm gonna be able to solve mentally as long as I take a look at the numbers to the left of the seven as well. So I have 27 hundred thousands and six hundred thousands. When you can read them in words like that, it can make it easier to see that we wanna add 27 and six. We wanna add 27 hundred thousands to six hundred thousands. 27 plus six is 33. But remember, it's not just 33, it's 33 hundred thousands. So I need to add the hundreds and then the comma and the thousands, 33 hundred thousands. Or if we're reading it in periods, now that I have the number created, I could read it as 3,300,000. Thinking about these numbers in words can also be helpful. This in words would look like this on the screen, 27 hundred thousands plus six hundred thousands equals 33 hundred thousands. When you're reading each number to the same place value, the label on the number, hundred thousands, notice that it stays the same in each addend and in the sum. 
Hundred thousands, hundred thousands, hundred thousands. Let's take a look at a subtraction problem together now. Again, the best way to get the closest estimate and solve the problem mentally is to first identify the greatest place value in the lesser number. In this problem, 60,000 is the lesser value. So the six is the greatest place value, and that's the 10,000s place. I'm gonna identify that place value in both numbers. I'm gonna go to the other number, 3,450,000, and I'm gonna identify the 10,000s place. There's a five in that place value. And now to solve, I wanna take a look at all the numbers to the left as well. I can read this problem as 345 ten thousands minus six ten thousands. My answer is also going to be in ten thousands. So I wanna solve mentally 345 minus six. We can do that in our heads, right? That's 339. But remember, it's not just 339, that's actually 339 ten thousands. So I wanna add the zeros and the commas and it would be read 339 ten thousands if you were reading it to the same place value here that we identified in the other numbers. But if we were reading it in a traditional way, this would be 3,390,000. Your turn now. Let's practice a few of these on the paper provided to you. So I want you to take notes here. I want you to round each number that I give you to the nearest 100,000 and then estimate the sum or the difference. Remember, you're not getting an exact answer. The approximately symbol is here on the screen. So on your paper, you wanna write what you round this number to and what you round this number to, and then you wanna give an answer to the rounded numbers. If you wanna go ahead and give this one a try on your own, push pause and you can push play when you're ready. If you'd like to get started with me on this problem, continue watching and make sure to copy down notes on your paper. Get out those highlighters and use the strategies that we're learning in class. They are very helpful. Okay, so if I'm rounding to the 100,000s place, I wanna start by identifying the 100,000s place. I have a five in the 100,000s in my second add end, I have a six in the hundred thousands in the first add end. Now I can round. When we round, we look next door and determine if the number is closer, in this case, if the number is closer to 600,000 or 700,000. In this case, when we look next door, it's four or less. So we wanna let the six rest. That means that 639,043 is closer to 600,000 than 700,000. When I round 599,216 to the nearest 100,000s place, I look next door and I see five or more in the 10,000s place, which means that we're going to round up. This number is closer to 600,000 than 500,000. Now, as I solve to make it easier mentally, I want to look at the non-zero digits. I have a six in the hundred thousands place in both numbers. So I wanna add six plus six, which is 12. But remember, it's not just 12, it's 1,200 thousands. Since we are going to end up with more than nine in the hundred thousands place, the one is going to carry over to the millions. So if I were to write this in words, it would look like this. Six hundred thousands plus six hundred thousands equals 12 hundred thousands. I'll write down my 12 and then I want to account for the place value because the biggest error is that sometimes people leave off one of those zeros and write that the answer is 120,000. That doesn't make sense, right? How could the answer be less than one of the add-ins? So I'm going to write 12, hundred, add my comma, thousands. If I'm reading it normally, it would be 1,200,000. Okay, now give this one a try. Your screen is going to freeze in just a moment as you go ahead and solve this problem on paper. Submit your estimated answer here when you're ready. And after you click submit, the video will continue and I'll go over it so you can check your work. 
As always, we wanna start by identifying the greatest place value in the lesser number. So 896,900 is less than the other number. So I'm going to start there. I'm gonna find the hundred thousands place in that number, and then I'm gonna do the same thing in the other number. Now I'm going to be able to round. If you rounded these numbers correctly, the first number should have been rounded to 7,800,000, and the second number should have been rounded to 900,000. Now I'm going to take a look at the non-zero digits to add, and I'm going to read it a little differently. In 7,800,000, there are 7,800 thousands plus 900 thousands equals, I want to take a look at the 78 and the 9 and add them together to find out how many total 100 thousands there are. 78 plus 9 is 87. There are 87 hundred thousands. If that stumped you, this may help. Did you use your highlighter? Did you highlight the 78 hundred thousands and the 900 thousands that you're adding together? If you highlight those non-zero digits, it can make solving this a little bit more manageable. 78 plus nine is how I got the 87, the eight and the seven in my sum. There are 87 hundred thousands. The video is going to pause again as you solve this problem in your notes. When you're ready, submit the estimated sum. I don't need to see what you rounded each number to, just submit what the estimated answer is. I started solving by highlighting the hundred thousands place in each number. Now I can round each number by looking next door. 830,700 should be rounded to 800,000 and 426,500 should be rounded to 400,000. Now I can solve. I have 800 thousands minus 400 thousand, which should equal 400 thousands. If you got the correct answer, you would have submitted 400 thousand. Let's try another one. Again, solve this on your own and submit your answer when you're ready for me to go over it with you. I started by highlighting the hundred thousands place in both numbers. Now I can look next door to round each number and get an estimated answer. 4,562,718 should round to 4,600,000. 732,491 rounds to 700,000. Now I'm going to solve by looking at the 4,600,000s and the 700,000s. I want to subtract seven from 46. Hundred thousands. 46 minus 7 is 39, but again, it was 39 hundred thousands. We have to account for that place value. So I add five zeros and then the commas to separate my periods. If you submitted 3,900,000, nice job. So that's it for our review today, but don't put your math away because we do have a lesson for today on multiplication. So keep your math out, but you can close your laptop and pull out a book and read quietly if you finished a little bit before everybody else. I'm going to give everyone else a few more minutes to finish up before we move on together.